Bless the offering. Father, receive our offering this evening. We have honored you to our substance. We have brought back to you what belongs to you. You created everything for you, by you, and for you. Receive all the praise. Receive all the glory. Receive all the worship. You give seed to the sower, bread to the eater. Father, receive our seed. And let there be bread in the house of the Lord and bread in our homes. Cause men to give back to us according to your word. When we give, he shall be given back to us. Good men shall press down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give into a bosom? Cause men to give, Lord. Cause men to give, Lord. Let your sons and daughters come back with testimonies. Testimonies. In Jesus' precious holy name. Just pray in the Holy Ghost as you open up your heart to the teaching of the word. Father, use your servant to bring deep truths and revelation to our spirit. Let every dream come alive. Let every vision come alive. Bring answers, O oh Lord, to our visions and dreams with the teaching of the word. Grant us quality, O oh Lord, and understanding tonight. Oh, Father, we need quality. We need quality. We need understanding, O oh Lord. Thank you that in dreams and visions you instruct us. Lord, thank that in our dream life we can monitor and see our future and give direction, oh Lord, for our future. Thank you, the Lord, that in dreams you correct us, you warn us, you lead us. So minister to us, my Father, through your servant. Use him again. Use him again. Grant him the eloquence, the boldness, the quality he needs to impart knowledge. For the entrance of your word gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. I pray there'll be understanding tonight. 
we pray for revelation knowledge in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together as we welcome Pastor Peter to come and bless us with the word. Please write down those questions. Write down the questions and uh, we'll see if we can be able to answer some of these questions today. Yeah, welcome to Shalom members. Uh, thank you for coming. Once again, bless. thank you very much, Apostle. You're welcome. Thank you much, very much, uh, Pastor Mupe and the leaders for allowing me to be here. And thank you very much for coming night after night to listen and to be blessed and impacted by the Lord. Amen. thank you again for your goodness we thank you for your presence we thank you for your anointing we thank you for your spirit we cry out to you holy spirit that lord may you anoint every word that i speak before you in jesus name that lord you will lose the oil you lose the power to break yokes you lose the power to understand dreams to see revelation Lord, I speak that wells that have been covered will be open tonight in the name of Jesus. And I decree that, Lord, where we've been scratching on the surface, I thank you that, Lord, you will cause us to go to another level. We thank you that, Lord, the house has gone to another level. And we give you glory for a new level of revelation, a new level of understanding, a new level of empowerment. So, Lord, I say that let the angel of the Lord begin to speak to each one of us privately personally oh god and generally in the name of jesus so we thank you and we give you praise in jesus name hallelujah amen amen, amen. thank you very much choir you may have your seats in jesus name amen hallelujah when i was coming here the first time i felt like shalom has gone to another level so even what I'm teaching, I have to rearrange. So that's, I didn't come with the slides I used before. I've had to make new slides for every lesson, every evening. Because I believe you have gone somewhere. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You have gone to a new level in God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So yesterday, remember, we were talking about desire. And we said that your desire should be submitted to God. Amen. Why were we saying that? I wasn't saying that you shouldn't have desire. Have desires. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that God will give them and they shall be yours. That's what Jesus said. Amen. But then those desires must not go beyond what the Lord has prepared for you. Because like we looked at Genesis, the desire went out of bounds. Hallelujah. 
And so also on desire, I want to remind you as uh, we go into today, I'll use more pictures in Jesus' name. Some of our desires don't only rule in the area that we talked about yesterday. Amen. But they rule also especially this year. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when there are elections, for us who lead prayers, that's when now we start tiptoeing. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. He's praying for that part. Lord, have release your power. He's praying for that part. Hallelujah. Election year is very sensitive. Amen. People are listening to what you are saying, how you are dressed, and everything, because they want to make a conclusion from what you are saying. But there is no conclusion. Amen. And so what happens usually in a year like this is that normally we have dreams. Hallelujah. There is nothing wrong with belonging to a party. You can belong. Amen. But even in that area, let the rule of God reign in Jesus' name. Amen. Let what? One of the things that I notice that when we are praying for elections, quiet, quiet. Are we together? But you know one thing that believers forget. That's what I've noticed. That Jesus is the king of kings. He is the lord of lords. He is the head of all presidents. The ruler of the kings of the earth. And when we come before him and submit our desires to him, it will be easier for God to start speaking to you clearly and directly in Jesus' name. Amen. So, first, amen. Amen. At least, let your desire come under the desire of God. And that's what I was trying to say about Habakkuk. He was seeing things he didn't want to see, but God was still showing him. So, as Shalom Embassy, you are watchmen. So, you have to pray and see what God wants you to see, whether you like it or you don't like it. But as long as you are seeing, that is what is important. Amen. Okay, let's start for tonight's session so that I don't lose you. I don't lose you at all in Jesus' name. Tonight what I want to do, I know we have some questions we are preparing, but I want to remind you of some symbols and just expand because we've been saying symbols can be double-sided this way and that way. So I want to start with a common one, the snake. A lot of people dream they are seeing snakes. Amen. They are seeing what? So generally we know that a snake will represent witchcraft and demons. But we want to go beyond witchcraft and demons that you already know. Amen. So we see in the Bible, in Genesis chapter 3, that when man and woman were in the garden, the serpent came to Eve. And she gave her a suggestion. And the suggestion, or well, the pictures are not clear, but at least you can see. Amen. So when the woman was given a suggestion in chapter 3, the devil told her that you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And when she saw that the fruit was desirable, good to eat, good to the eye, she fell for that temptation. So the first thing I want you to notice is that a snake can also represent deception. A snake can represent what? Deception. It can also represent lies. It can also represent those who give you twisted truth. So sometimes you might have a dream and in your, in your house there is a snake. Sometimes it is not a witch. Or in your office, and all of a sudden there are, there are snakes in the office. Are we together? You are now quiet. I think Mararota San and Sok. Sometimes we need to go beyond witches. I know they are there, but let's look at the whole picture of the snake. We have talked about witchcraft, deception. So maybe you are working with people who are not honest. 
Maybe you are working with people who are telling lies. The picture may still come before you and say they are snakes. Jesus called the Pharisee, what? You brood of vipers. Are we together? In other words, he called the religious leaders. They were teaching people things that God was not teaching. And Jesus called them a brood of vipers. A company of what? Snakes. So a person that tells lies can be a snake. So if you are dating somebody, at least you are dating you are dating, dating. You are dating somebody. First, go pick up our breaks. Because maybe in soccer, you are going to pay for your fine. Maybe you are dating a snake. Hallelujah. You know that snakes are found in church. That's why Jesus said, You brood of vipers. He was telling the Pharisees in the synagogue not outside the synagogue thank you the snake was found in the garden where adam and eve was are we together so if you are always dreaming you're a snake a snake business you are a snake do you want to say business sometimes you need to ask yourself this partner i have agreed with in business is he honest is he deceiving me do you want to say agree it is always losses they always have a story of losses. You might have a dream that a snake is in your business. Maybe they are, they are lying. Maybe they are not telling you the truth. Are we together? So instead of binding the witchcraft, ask God. Because when Paul had a shipwreck, he was busy attending to the wood, not knowing that a snake had called round his hand. So you might be busy in your field and the snake... Is surrounding you so snakes can represent deception poison there are those people when they speak when they speak a snake bites with the mouth when it releases poison you will die there are people you might keep company with their words are like poison if you continue listening to their words you will die like Adam and Eve so sometimes we have to look around I am with my friends a snake all of a sudden appeared that's what somebody said. I was with my friend who were playing in this dream and a snake came. Maybe that friend of yours is deceiving you. He's leading you on the wrong path. And she said, yes, actually, he's not a good friend. So the snake in the dream was talking about the guy. Are we together? Should I go on? Then there are cobras, but there are also pythons. A python doesn't bite. your mangoshe, it will bite you, strike you there, and then you will feel the pain. But the python wants to surround the person. And then it begins to twist itself. And then it begins to suffocate you until you cannot breathe. Until the life in that person is taken away. When the life is gone, then it will swallow up that person. Are we together? Do not be equally yoked with unbelievers. Some friendships are like a python. movies. But slowly, you are being constricted. You are a prayer warrior. You are on fire. All of a sudden, the fire starts going. You were committed in church. The life is slowly going out. Are we together? And when your life has gone out, finally it swallows you. You are not even in church anymore. Why? Because a python was at work. So sometimes when you have these dreams, look at where the python is. Maybe God is telling you about somebody. Are we together? But also because we say the dream is for the dreamer, maybe God is talking about you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So if you like telling lies, you like deceiving people. Some people when they tell lies, they can't even know that they are lying. And you are dreaming a snake. Maybe your language has become like a snake. 
So nga mwa binda mwa binda which craftin so kataire ya first kui pusha mwelesa am I deceptive? Am I honest? Am I transparent? Now I know you are thinking, how can it be? Creatures can represent the character of a person. So let's so Jesus is called what? The Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. He is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Because he is the ruling king. The serpent. Amen. Let's talk about dogs. We always talk about dogs. A lot of people dream about dogs. You can write Revelations 22. I've taken time on the snake because a lot of people dream about snakes and they say, Nari binda, nari kaka, I've fasted, it's not going. Maybe bufi. Amen. Revelations chapter 22, uh, verse 15. But outside are the dogs and those who practice sorcery, magic acts, impurity, uh, adulterers, fornicators, murderers, idolaters, and everyone who loves and deals in falsehood, untruth, error, deception, cheating. So now let's talk about the dogs. Amen. Normally, it means in a family immorality. Now, a lot of them want to sexual immorality. Amen. So that one, because you know it, let's first go beyond it. It's not only sexual immorality that the dog represents. According to this one, it says number one, sorcerers. So, avalo she wants any finish. That is what the Bible is saying. Amen. So you can dream you are surrounded by dogs. Do you understand what she was saying? So the dog, according to this verse, can represent sorcerers. Number one. Number two, it can represent uh, those who are impure. To be impure, it can be impure language. It can be impure character, impure deeds. A person just loves to do things that are unclean, things that are unholy. According to this Bible, the impure are referred to by this as dogs. Now, if you remember, Proverbs says, the dog returns to its vomit. In other words, it eats, it vomits, and it goes back and eats what it has vomited. So sometimes you might be dreaming a dog, and maybe God might just be telling you, you keep repenting, but you are going back to the same sin. Today you say, I'm sorry. Tomorrow there is an opportunity. You go and sin. Again, you go back to the same. Are we together? Why? God may just show you a picture of one thing. When you read the Bible, most of the symbols, you will find them. The scripture will tell you, you won't get lost. That's why I'm giving you a reference. Amen. So, every time it is dogs, now we interview them. How is your life? Are you living a holy life? <laughs> Are we together? Adulterers. <clears throat> What do you think? Anyway, Paul in Galatians chapter 5 says, I warned you like I warned you before, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And then he says, adulterers, fornicators. He wasn't writing to people at the market. He was writing to people in the church. Are we together? So you might have this dream and there are dogs everywhere around you. Maybe you are found in the wrong company. The Bible says bad company corrupts good morals. Paul didn't say don't talk to unbelievers otherwise you will need to get out of the world. But if you are best friends with adulterers, Firambukire Fintwine, Are we together? The more you are hearing testimony, how your friend was going with somebody's husband. If you ever send the BMW, now I send Benz. Murderers are represented by dogs as well. So when you are dreaming dogs, it is all these things that we are talking about. But on a positive side, in Isaiah 56, verse 10, the Bible calls uh, the, the watchmen who were sleeping dogs. So if a watchman, an intercessor, is sleeping, they have lost sensitivity. 
to the presence of God. Again, it will refer to them as sleeping dogs. Why? Because dogs are for security. That is on the positive side. Amen. Dogs are for what? For security. And that's why God says, if the watchmen are sleeping, the enemy will come in. So you might have a dream. Pashalom members, but I'm wishing if my vicious dogs, na firala fiance. So you don't wake up and start binding the dogs. First people shall say, what are you saying? Maybe intercession avantuna varala tavale mona. Are we together? Why? Because a dog is very sensitive. They say that those dogs that are trained, if you, they are looking for you and you drop your sweat, and the dog is here, it will smell that you are somewhere in that direction and it will start following you because they are very what? Sensitive. So sleeping dogs can also mean people have lost spiritual sensitivity, not able to detect the enemy. Amen. Caleb. You know what Caleb means? Pardon? Pardon? No. Okay, then we'll more for Caleb is a nice name. But I want to, let me just teach honestly so that we look at all the things. Amen. What the name Caleb means, um, it's interesting because he followed God faithfully. Are we together? He followed what? God faithfully. And one of the things that you see, while we talk about a dog being immoral and unfaithful and everything, a dog usually is very faithful to the master. Are we together? It will follow, follow, follow. If we get it, will follow you. Are we together? And that's what Caleb did. He followed God everywhere. Even when they refused to enter the promised land, he followed God. So there is an aspect of commitment to the master. The faithfulness of a stubborn dog. Are we together? Can you follow God faithful even when the opposition is saying that to lay in and there? Ten spies refuse in and there. Amen. The next picture I want you to focus on is uh, that of an elephant. Sometimes people, they dream about elephants, especially Abakwa High. Amen. All oh, our chiefdoms have what? Symbols. But Abakwa High need the elephant. Let's talk about the elephant. Why am I talking about these things? God speaks in things you can understand. So I'm just making them simple so that you can relate them to other things. God uses a language you know. He doesn't speak in strange speech so that Mambo Kwingilam, what is the meaning? No, so an elephant, what are the strengths of an elephant? One, it is very powerful, very powerful tasks. But then it has also a very powerful memory. If you offend the elephant today, Mwafmako Mwafmana Livingstone Nangukumongu, and you go away, you, you, you hit the, the baby of the elephant and ran away. You will come back 20 years. It will come and fix you. Because you think it has forgotten you. It has a very sharp memory. It will remember you. So some of those people who are attacked by elephants, maybe they did something. Nobody knows. We start to find out if you to wake up, you are the one. Are we together? So you could be dreaming an elephant. You could have great strength. But maybe God could be telling you that there is no forgiveness in your life. Until you, at upon my dead, what? That is unforgiveness. That is the memory of the elephant. The memory, the desire to revenge, the desire to hit back. So sometimes you might be dreaming that big elephant and you are really thinking they have come to kill me. No, they haven't. Maybe God is telling you that you are so strong in your unforgiveness. This unforgiveness will kill you. Amen. Are we together? Amen. You can put the next one for the cow. There is a cow there. If you read Genesis 49, you see one of the blessings of the earth is the milk and the butter. Some people will dream about a cow. To a pali business yesterday. I always like to make sure that we have a positive thought about business. 
Because we are good at praying for money and breakthrough. But when God brings the answer, we run away. Amen. So God can show you a picture of a cow. Remember in Genesis chapter 41, Pharaoh had a dream. They were fat cows and they were thin cows. The fat cows were representing good years, profitable years, years of success. The thin cows were representing years of struggle, years of challenge. So if you are dreaming thin cows, famished. Maybe God is telling you that things are not well. Maybe your business is not doing well. Or maybe the season that has come is hard. We need to be able to see that. But if you are seeing the, the fat ones, the nice ones that are well fed, it is talking about production. It is talking about success. Are we together? Amen. That's why if you dream that you have a lot of cows, before you come against the dream, before you come against the dream, Amen. Money we want. I told you yesterday, if you dream about money, ask God what will it take me to get this money. It's not how long will I sit in the sun for the money to appear. Because I'm waking, I'm waiting for a breakthrough for, from God. That's all. How do you expect that breakthrough to come? But I believe God. I will just pray. I will be in my house. Somebody will just walk in with a briefcase of money and give me. And that is my breakthrough. <laughs> be careful with that breakthrough. Okay? Be careful what? Okay, come here. pick a lot. We pick a lot and they have succeeded and they are doing well. Why? Because when money comes suddenly, you have no plans. When it comes suddenly, when it comes suddenly, you have no plan. You didn't work for it. Are we together? But when you allow God to show you the process of increasing, the Bible says in Proverbs, he who increases wealth little by little shall have much. Not who dreams under a tree that money will come. The one who increases little by... So If you see money, ask God, how is it coming? Amen. Okay, let me carry on. We are still on dreams. Which, which picture are we? Which one? Okay, let's go to the bull. Do you have the bull next? Which one do you have next? Yes, let's talk about the bull. Amen. We'll talk about the positive. We will talk about the negative. In Psalm 22, verse 12. Psalm 22, verse 12. Are we making progress? Psalm 22, verse 12. So in Psalm 22, verse 12, the Bible says, Many foes, many enemies, many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan have hedged me in. Against me they open their mouth wide like ravening and rolling lion. I'm poured out like what? This is the, the psalm of the prophecy of the Messiah. So this is what Christ is declaring when he's at the cross. But it's the psalmist who captured it. They have surrounded me like bulls. Bulls are very powerful. With fierce horns, they pierced Christ. They hit him with lashes. So sometimes a bull like that can represent very strong enemies according to this passage. Are we together? But then if you go in Ezekiel chapter 1, you find that one of the things, the four living creatures there is the face of a man, the face of an ox, there's the face of an eagle. Are we together? So now... The bull also can represent some other things that we need to know. You get what? The strong bulls to break the hard ground. Amen. A bull is also a symbol of the apostolic power and apostolic anointing. So you might be dreaming that you are plowing with a bull and you are breaking new grounds. 
grounds that have never been broken before. Maybe God is telling you this is time for a new apostolic work. You are going to break grounds that you have never broken before because a bull is strong. Are we together? A bull is strong. And that's the first one that you want to take in a new field. And that is the function of the apostolic to break new territories in Jesus' name. Are we together? Let's look at the tiger. Let's look at the tiger. You can put the tiger or the wild cats or the lions in one family. Those are hunting animals. Or you can put leopards, whichever one. These beasts, they hunt during the day and they hunt during the night. So if this is what you are seeing, it means you are seeing an animal, an enemy that can attack in the day and can also attack in the night. Are we together? For example, the O, each pululu, it can only go um, hunting in the night when it's dark. Like some people, they are like O's, if pululu, are we together? Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, let's carry on. So if you are dreaming that that one is an enemy, there is nothing good about that one. Hallelujah. <laughs> Are we together? Okay, now to I can't resist if the father of the house says it. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7. Are we there? Let's start from verse 5. Verse 4. It's talking to a son. So let me just jump to bit five, five and keeping the words. That they may keep you from the loose woman, from the adventurers, from the ad adventurers who flatters with words, who flatters with and smooth words. For at the window of my house, I looked through my lattice among the simple, empty headed, empty hearted ones. I perceived among the youths a young man void of sense, uh, sauntering around the streets near her house, her corner. He went the way to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, night black and dense falling over the young man's life, and behold, there met him a woman dressed like a prostitute and slay and cunning of heart. She is turbulent and willful. Her feet never stay at home. Now in the streets, now in the marketplace. She sets her ambush at the corner. She, so she caught him and kissed him. And with impudent face, she said to him, Sacrifices of peace offering are due from me. This day I have paid my vows. So I came forth to meet you that I, you may share with me. Verse 16 I have spread my couch with rugs and cushions and tapestry, tapestry, stripped sheets from Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with may, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us drink deep of love. But to continue the story, it says, My husband has gone away for one month. He shall not come until the month ends. Are we together? This story is in the Bible. Hallelujah. Go and finish it at home. I've shown you one each pololo. Amen. When it was dark, it came out and found a young man who lacked sense and caught him. So, let's go in Jesus' name. Are you offended? At least say amen. Hallelujah. So these things are night hunters. Are we together? They are also day hunters. Again, I want to turn your attention to crocodiles. Crocodiles. A crocodile is also a symbol of authority, a symbol of power, a symbol of the king. So Pharaoh was called the 
crocodile of the night, the, the now. You can write Ezekiel 29 verse 2. Pharaoh was boasting, I am the crocodile of the night, the, the Nile River. Nine won't take a moment. So if you are always dreaming crocodiles, sometimes it is a spiritual authority. Sometimes it's an authority in the family. Are we together? Sometimes it may be a wrong influence, an oppressive ruler over you. If there is somebody who oppresses you like Pharaoh, you might dream a crocodile around you. It might be the type of person you are working with. They are like crocodiles. A crocodile will be looking at you, but it will swing its tail and hit you to destroy you. Those are the people who will smile at you. Oh, mama, you are not limited. Mama, we are not limited. Teti milu fi anye nangu. Ya inefe mwa fuma ponomba ba misu mwa ba milia. Crocodile. Are we together? Okay. Can conquer it. Let's go to the ego. The ego is a symbol of the prophets that you will like, I'm sure. You'll find it in Deuteronomy 32. Like an ego stares up its young. So the Lord led Moses. He was with him and no foreign God was with Moses. So the first positive thing is the ego represents the prophets because they can see at a distance. They can fly at high realms in the presence of God. But then in the dark world, it is also divination. That's why because even the enemy wants to use the same symbols. Are we together? So you need to know this ego I'm seeing, is it the ego of God or is it the spirit of divination? There are people who sleep, they just see eyes are looking at them. Are we together? Some people every evening they are beds. Are we together? Scavengers are thieves. thieves. They come to steal. It steals. So if you are always dreaming crows, it means that there is something amiss. There is something the enemy is trying to steal from your life. So for the ego, you need to ask God, is it uh, the prophetic that you are talking about or am I seeing the spirit of divination? Amen. I want to move fast, Yang. Put that picture of the house. A lot of people dream about the house. A lot of people dream about the house. An old house. Amen. So, right first Samuel chapter 20, verse 16, it just says house of David. So sometimes house, refer to the scripture house of David, house of Abraham house of somebody. So one of the things that a house represents is the headship and the family or the foundation. So if it is the house of David, it is David and all his family. So sometimes when you are dreaming that old house, it might be something to do with the family. Are we together? So you have moved on, but it's like you are stuck in that house. It could be stagnation that you are stuck. Or maybe there are evil foundations in that family that you need to overcome. So sometimes it's something that started way back. And so when you see the house, you need to ask God, what is it about this house? It may not be about the building. House of David. So in the house of Banda, think of house of Banda. Whereas, what do you want me to know? Panganda ya bamsondei. Mudatuwa lekara, mudatuwa kulire. Nimi mudia my issues. Are we together? Sometimes when you dream the old house, it means I have not gone beyond. Meaning there are issues. In our society, there is a lot of abuse. There is a lot of mistreatment, especially in past generations. So you find that people have grown up, but they are carrying wounds from the time they were young in their houses, in the home. In the home. Amen. And so God may be telling you, you need to release some issues. You need to forgive some things. I was mistreated by my mother or I was mistreated by my aunt. I was mistreated by this one. You might still be dreaming that house of mistreatment. Are we together? Then sometimes there are evil covenants that can be in that house. So you need to ask God, is it an agreement? Is it a covenant that we partook in that house? So that God can deliver you. Most of the people have discovered that when they dream old houses, it has something to do with 
A house has many rooms. The Bible says you are the temple of the living of the Holy Spirit. So sometimes when you see a house, God is talking to you. God is talking about you. If the house is not clean, maybe God is talking about you. If it's something in that house, maybe I have kept things I have not let go of. The moment I release those people or those things, freedom will come in my spirit. Amen. Let me skip so that I can get questions. Let me talk about the first car. I talked about the car. Some people dream they are in fast cars. Kare utuka feka moto ka auteza speed teba leen shabekire na kunumba. Are we together? You have no control of that car. And sometimes God is telling you, you are not in control of your life. Ule en sha auteze yo eo le chita control life ye. Are we together? It's going where I don't want. Look at your friend. Somebody sent a similar dream. I mean, this car is my car. I'm in the back seat. The person driving is driving at high speed and that they are moving you quickly. Amen. Are we together? Are we together? Who is influencing your life? Especially if you are not the one driving. Who is influencing and driving your life? Some people dream sometimes it's missing an opportunity. Other people dream they are on a bus. They come off the bus and the bus crashes. Maybe God is telling you this journey you are on, it is not your journey. You need to come out of this quickly, otherwise you crash. Amen. Some people dream they are cleaning the church, they are sweeping the church, they are just cleaning chairs. Johnson Dr. Fende clean am church. It's a dream of service. There's nothing wrong with cleaning the church. There's nothing to bind. God may be calling you to save him. Are we together? Get involved. And as you are serving in the house of God, God's reward will come to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I will, if you have written your questions, let me have at least a few so that um, Pastor Isaac he can help me if there are questions. If there are not, I will explain one more. Some people were saying that I'm always dreaming I'm helping children. Should if you win. God is telling you that you might need to help those who can't help themselves. Are we together? There was a man who sent me a dream and that I'm cooking eggs at home. And as he was boiling the eggs, no, it's fine. No, it's fine. As, as the, the eggs were being boiled, if, then his uncle arrived with the niece. When they arrived, I said, I'm going to pay my eggs. I said, i So I asked him, just look at your uncle and your niece. Maybe they are in great need. And that thing that you have, maybe they need help. And he said, yeah, it is very true. They are in great need. And I have something I can help. Amen. This one. It says that a group of intercessors were at the airport about to fly out of the country, then the pastor's wife showed up and the trip was canceled. So they said she is a hindrance. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she is not the hindrance. Maybe she came just in time. Because sometimes you, a journey can be canceled by God. Remember Paul want, wanted to go to Macedonia. He was determined and then in the night, somebody appeared and said, don't go to Macedonia. Go this, other, I mean, don't go to Asia. Go to Macedonia. So though he wanted to go, God had to intervene. 
So you have to look in, in two ways when you have a dream and ask God, is this your personal feeling? Are we together? Because sometimes we have a will that cannot be corrected. Remember we said to, about Habakkuk, I will stand at my watch and wait to see the answer he will give when I am what? Corrected. I have been dreaming about an aeroplane for five times, almost crashing, but when I intercede, it lands safely. And I always find myself inside the plane, preaching and leading people to Christ. So now, yesterday you said Kaza ministry. So this one, because you are preaching in the plane, then God could be talking about your ministry. Are we together? Because if it is crashing, there are people that God has called, and for some reason they are feeling like giving up. And you could be seeing that plane crashing. But then when you pray, it continues to fly. So if you are about to give up, it's time to persevere. Let your plane reach the destination. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll try to pick one one. The others I'll do tomorrow. I was at school with a friend of mine chatting with our lecturer as we were about to leave for our boarding house. He offered to walk along with us as it was the same route. When we met a lady who knew our lecturer, exchanged greetings, then we continued walking. Then he gave us 200 kwacha notes, each of us gifts and we parted ways. Normally when people dream about money, like the way you are explaining, usually it's because they have a need. Are we together? Usually they have a need. It is like one young man who sent a dream at I am dreaming, I am at my brother's wedding, Nish brother wakwari mukupu. And then I'm the one, guy these days takwa wama gift school up kempi I was the one getting money from the people as they were coming in. When I got all the money, I went and paid my school fees. At least I your nephew. So he was so desperate for money that he started dreaming himself, stealing from the brother. The real issue is that he had a financial need. Are we together? So sometimes when you also have dreams like this, they are praying. But they are looking at Pastor Isaac. Lord, I am praying for 500 kwacha. I need breakthrough. I'm believing Pastor Isaac. When I appear at church, he will give me. So their eyes are focused on a person. So when you dream like that, sometimes that is the case. Amen. This one is two pages, so I have to study it. Since I'm in the pulpit. Hmm. What does charcoal represent in a dream? Charcoal can mean many things. Charcoal sometimes is like ashes. Are we together? If you if 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 a person like in the old testament when they would be mourning, they would put ashes on their heads. So sometimes Charcoal and ashes is what is left after the fire. So it depends on the full context of what that charcoal was doing in a dream. But because we said if you say negative, but in Gamamona Marashana Yekala Masaka Yengi, quite in the Movo Moreshisha, then the tutorial that is misery. Maybe God is telling you, yeah, business, you are to succeed. So it depends because you have just put a line. So the rest of the details we don't know. Are we together? Blackness also means sorrow. Mm. Dreaming an eight months old baby driving a car speed. Is not run up on me to get there. So, ngani moto kaya nubare insha ni shwa allowing somebody who is mature to take responsibility of things. Are we together? 
You can even see that you take a capacity, but you are entrusting them with something big. That is what God could be warning you about. When you write one sentence like this, it can mean so many things. Dreaming yourself you are in the newspaper. Maybe you will be advertised or maybe you will become popular. Are we together? But you need to tell us what was the headline. Our papers are more dangerous. Amen. What was the headline in that paper? <laughs> This one is like Jesus. At I dream, I don't know if it's the same person while sharing a paper. I normally dream about sharing bread slices and fish to thousands of people. <laughs> but the bread and the fish never run out. This one is very good. You should be happy. God will supply until you never run out. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let God supply you. Amen. God shall supply. And the Bible in Proverbs says, the one who helps others shall also be helped. The one who refreshes others shall be what? Refreshed. So it's a good dream that you are seeing. This one, I didn't talk about it, but I had planned. But anyway, I, I dreamt of a big dry tree. After the warfare, we had, okay, a big dry tree. So he's saying after the warfare, you had, probably you are praying at the altar in chase and you dreamt a big dry tree. Trees can represent people to start with. Trees can represent kings. Nebuchadnezzar was represented by a tree, a, a tree that was cut down. Trees can represent nations also. Are we together? A tree can represent a person, a nation, um, a king, somebody in authority. So a tree is also something that is ancient, that has been there for a long time. So if you pray and the tree has dried up, it means some power, some authority. The power of that thing, the life of that thing has been destroyed. Are we together? The life of that thing has been destroyed. Perhaps you need to push and say, Lord, let it be uprooted in Jesus' name. For sometimes when you see big trees falling, sometimes it's big people falling, Strong people falling, principalities falling, powers falling, things that hold territories falling. Somebody says they dreamt of bees in the house. Bees, they are two things. The Bible talks about the sting of death coming from the bee. Are we together? So, in a general sense, the bee can represent demonic invasion. Think of Satan is called Beelzebub, the Lord of Flies. So if bees are coming to sting you uh, in a house, then that can represent uh, that kind of a thing. Always dreaming of horns, thorns piercing your foot. Thorns are cases. You remember Jesus had the crown of thorns representing the cases? So now your feet you should be covered with the gospel of peace, Ephesians chapter 6. And then the psalmist says, how beautiful on the mountain are the feet of those who bring good news. So your feet represent your walk in life, your journey in life. So if your feet are being pierced with stones, it means your journey is full of pain, cases, and those stones need to be broken in Jesus' name. Are we together? Are we together? What if the cattle is chasing you? Then that is oppression. You remember I talked about the bulls of Bashan, Psalm 22. That is enemy power if it is chasing you. So that thing has to be broken. Amen. Uh, I will read the rest tomorrow as we pray. But tonight we can stand. Are we fine? Are we okay? 
Let's stand and pray. At least we should pray for something after all we have heard. In Jesus' name. I'll keep this. We'll continue tomorrow to answer what I haven't answered. In the name of Jesus. Just raise your hands to the Lord. If you have the elephant, even if you didn't see the elephant, but you know there is an elephant in your heart, it is time to release the elephant. Amen. So if there are people you haven't forgiven, I never fully raw and I'm tare, but it's this thing you want to say in the day, when I intend six, the phone should I take care of this is time to release those things in Jesus name. Amen. Are we together? Just speak to the Lord. Let him release you tonight from something that you have heard in Jesus name. Father, we cry out in Jesus name that Lord, you bring freedom. In the spirit, your glory will come down and just bring deliverance. In the name of Jesus. I want you to start with forgiveness, really. I want you to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I choose to release and to forgive any person that has wounded me. I choose to let go of every grudge in my spirit. In the name of Jesus, I'm asking you to set me free. Where you have been dreaming about the old house, I want you to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, deliver me from evil foundations. Deliver me from evil covenants. Release me from that house. Every bondage in that house. Every torment in that house. Every pain I experienced in that house. Release me from that house. Every evil memory from that house. Release me tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, I lose the sword of your spirit now to just bring deliverance and freedom. I declare deliverance and freedom. From that house, I declare deliverance and freedom. In the name of Jesus, I declare that your memory is being healed. I command those chains in your spirit, those chains around your heart to be broken in the name of Jesus. I command that prison house that has formed over your life. I declare that it is broken today. I declare that it is broken today. I command that arrow. Some of you is like an arrow in your heart. I command that arrow to release you. The words that have been spoken. The words of pain. The curses that have been pronounced. I command those curses to be broken in the name of Jesus. Some of you, I feel like you have been aborting destinies. I command that spirit of abortion to release you now in the name of Jesus. I command that spirit that has been terminating progress to release you now in the name of Jesus. I command the spirit of abortion, loose every chain, loose every chain. I command that graveyard spirit, that graveyard spirit to break in the name of Jesus. I break the graveyard covenant. I command those things that were made at the graveyard and your name was mixed in it. I command a total release. I command a total release. What has been dying? I declare the life of God. I declare the life of God. I loose you from the graveyard spirit. I loose you in the name of Jesus. Some of you is like you have been surrounded by an ego, a fish ego that has been hunting from your life. I command that evil ego to stop fishing, to stop fishing from your river, from your life in the name of Jesus. I command a total release total release I declare those claws of an ego in your womb in your belly whatever sits in your womb is like an ego is catching I command those nails to break today in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I release the fire and the glory in your womb I release the fire and the glory in your womb I release the fire and the glory I command that darkness in your belly to break, break, break. I loose the oil of God over you. 
be free be free be free I command that yoke of the dogs that yoke of sorcery to release you now some of you it's like you are under an umbrella you use the umbrella for rain but that umbrella is keeping away the goodness I command it to break in Jesus name every evil cover over you I break it I want you to raise one hand your right hand and say Lord I receive the fire in my hand I put that fire in my belly now put that hand over your belly now I release fire in your belly every snake every python spirit is being destroyed I command those chains of the python those teeth of the snake in your belly I uproot them in Jesus name I declare there shall no longer be death in your belly no more death no more death no more death father we thank you that Elisha declared no more death in the river no more death in the river by a covenant of salt we thank you no more death in the river no more death in that abdomen in the lower abdomen somebody's like sit something is sitting in the lower abdomen I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus let go let go it's like a chain around your belly I break those beads I break them in the name of Jesus be free thank you Lord for that release thank you for that release some of you is like something is just moving out of your lower abdomen is going thank you for the release release of your presence release of your glory release of your glory oh rababa suraba baba basita celebrate very andalam let there be a deep cleaning in your belly a deep cleaning a deep cleaning a deep cleaning a deeper cleaning of his spirit Father, remove every yoke. In the name of Jesus, I command those roots that are on the inside to be uprooted by fire in Jesus' name. I command those roots, they look like the roots that grow at the river. I command them to come out in Jesus' name. Be loosed. Be loosed. Be loosed. Be loosed. I declare every snail that you see in the night, I break the snails. I decree you shall not be slow in movement. The glory of the Lord will lose you. I decree you shall not be in a shell. I speak movement. You shall not move in terror. I command a release. Father, I release fire in the belly. Holy Spirit, take over the belly tonight. There's something, Lord, you are dealing with. Open the rivers in the belly. Open your glory to move in the belly. Let the fire of God move in the valley. Move in the belly. Move in the belly. I command bondages. Break. Break. of me just put in our hands father we declare every death is broken by fire Lord release the power the sword covenant destroys darkness every barrenness tonight we declare it is broken by your glory by your spirit things that have died we speak life let the life Elisha proclaimed begin tonight I root out the head of darkness in the belly in the name of Jesus 
Thank you for the life of your presence. Sarababa basere yandala. Sirababa basere yandala. Some of you is like an evil magnet in your life. It just pulls things away from you. I command that evil power that pulls things from you to break and to crash. I command that evil drum that has been playing over you. I break it. The evil drum. You shall not dance to that sound. I break that drum. I rebuke the drama. I rebuke the evil sound. Father, we give you glory. Thank you that the snakes are living tonight. Your glory is here, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be Father, begin tonight with somebody. Be the Alpha. Be the Alpha. Release the Alpha glory tonight. Kira mamo satariata. Kila mamo celeberiandara. Lord, you said bulls are apostolic. They break foundations. Tonight, release the anointing of the apostolic. Break new foundations. Break new grounds. Break new grounds. Break those areas that have never been broken. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you glory. There is a release of his fire tonight. The release of his glory. Just drink the fire. Drink the glory. Drink the fire. Drink the glory. Drink the fire of God tonight. Oh, the Lord says, I am unwinding, I am undoing things that have been twisted in your belly. I am untwisting them, I am removing them, I am removing the webs, the webs in your belly. I am removing the webs that have destroyed your belly. I am uprooting them. Oh, release the fire, Lord. Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you for that release. Thank you for that river of glory flowing tonight. Thank you for the river of glory. The wells of your presence are opening. Some things are bursting open out of your belly. Some things are bursting open. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just open your mouth and drink deep. Breathe in. Breathe in and let the glory just fill you. Post.
one. Today, we overcome you. We overcome you with our seed. Our seed. Our seed. Our seed. Jesus. 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 You crushed the head of the serpent. The head of the serpent. The head of the serpent. We overcome. We overcome. We overcome. For the Bible says the seed of the woman will crush. Will crush. Lord, as we release our seeds, we declare prophetically you are crushing poverty. Crush poverty. Crush lack. Crush disease. Crush. Crush. We are crushing poverty. We are crushing the works of the enemy. Masando, Shalabe, Riyade, Suye, Sinele, Shalamayade, Riyandele, Shalamayade, Receive, Rako Suze, Shalamayade, Riyade, Suye. Receive deliverance. Receive revelation and receive a deliverance in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We connect. We connect along with our seeds. We are the seed of Abraham. We are the seed of Abraham. We are the seed of Abraham. We are connected today to the house of the King of Kings. Lord of Lords, we disconnect ourselves and detach ourselves from evil foundations, evil foundations, evil foundations, evil backgrounds. Thank you for the teaching of the word. Father, we see how David entered into a covenant with the house of, of Jonathan. Thank you, Lord. For the covenant that David made. And remember the house of Jonathan. Because of the covenant. We decree today. That every covenant that was made. Before we are born. Today. We enter into a new covenant. With the house of the son of David. The son of David. Jesus Christ the Messiah. You look as to say. She pe 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 se. He can do a shame. Beloved, as you're stepping out of this place, connect your house to the house of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, yes. Connect your house to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. Begin to disconnect yourself, your family, from that house of shame, that house of poverty, that house of lack. Father, thank you that we are in you. The old has gone, the new has come. The old has gone, the new has come. How do you disconnect yourself from the old house? How do you disconnect yourself from that evil house? It's by accepting Jesus Christ to come into your life, to be your Lord and personal Savior. You're watching online, you're in the house. You're not born again. Wherever you are, lift your hands and close your eyes and ask the Lord Jesus to come into your life. Ask him to come into your life. Ask him to come into your life. Ask him to come into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me all of my sins. The sins of my forefathers. The sins of my parents. Lord, I repent from the evil house, from the evil foundation, from the evil foundation. I disconnect myself from the evil covenants that we are made 
Lord Jesus, cleanse me with your precious blood. Cleanse me with your precious blood. Wash me clean with your blood. Come into my life. Be Lord of my life. With my mouth I confess, Jesus is Lord. With my heart I believe that God raised Christ Jesus from the dead. I accept him to be my Lord and personal Savior. I am born again. I'm connected to the house of the Lord. And the, I'm, I'm now a seed of Abraham. I am the seed of Abraham. I am the seed of Abraham. I'm no longer under a curse. I'm under a blessing. Lord Jesus, thank you for washing my sins away. If you have a slight, a slight back to the Lord today, say, Lord Jesus, I slide back to you. And I rebuke every spirit of lies, deception, sorcery, impurities out of my life. In the name of Jesus, I rededicate my life to you, Lord Jesus. And I never go back to the life of sin. You dog spirit, get out of my life. I'm not going back to my vomit. In the name of Jesus, I'm disconnected from the dog spirit. I'm detached from the dog spirit. In the name of Jesus, I make a decree. I am free. The old has gone. The new has come. May the Lord Jesus Christ now fill you with his Holy Spirit. The old has gone. The new has come. May he fill you with his Holy Spirit. As you're stepping out of this place, even as the man of God has declared that in the inside of you is the Alpha, the life of God, the power of God to flow in and through you. Go under that anointing. Go under that revelation and truth. Yes, Lord Jesus, I give you praise that your power is at work in our spirit. Yes, in your belly, rivers of living water are flowing. Rivers of living water are flowing. Step out to that river. Step out to that life. Step out to that anointing. Step out to that glory. Step out to the presence of the Lord. Step in that office tomorrow with the presence of the Lord. Step in the marketplaces with the presence of the Lord. Step in your yard tonight with the presence of the Lord. Step out of this place with the glory of God. Drive your car under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Jump on that taxi, on that bus, under the influence of the Holy Ghost. We release you in your glory as you drive back, as you walk back. And Lord, by faith I decree, your sons and daughters are all, walk, are all driving back. They came walking, but by faith they're driving back. And you're driving to their destiny. They'll be great in the land. They'll be great in the land. They'll be great in the land. And you're great in the land. And you're great in the land. Every dream that is of you to come alive. And they shall walk in that dream. I release you. Go. I put your purpose out. Go and impact your generation. Go and be the head and not the tail. Go and reign in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We receive from the Lord and we are empowered to prosper in Jesus' name. Somebody shout Amen. If you have received your blessing, shout a bigger Amen. If I received your miracle, your deliverance, shout it louder, amen. amen. Holy Ghost! Fire. Holy Ghost! Fire. Nothing missing, no. nothing broken. Shalom, shalom, surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. amen. Righteousness. Wickedness shall never enter a state of power and local government. Give God a shout of victory. Now, leave your chair and step into greatness by faith. Step into your greatness. 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 Into your greatness. See yourself prospering. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. So tomorrow the man of God will continue. He has laid the proper foundation for deliverance. And I believe there will be my deliverance tomorrow. On Sunday, sir, you will preach. 
Abusa pasande, bambiri wa mawane kera. So, tufuna, sifuna waka bure na madrimu, tuka pishe pasande. So, mka punze, waka dene kupisha maningi vonsi, vile tu wa ipa. So, there will be deliverance. After deliverance, I'm going to have communion. And after that, I'm going to have a covenant of salt and anoint you. <laughs> it will be power packed on Sunday. Let's celebrate the man of God as they walk into the office. Pastors, please. Pastors, accompany my, my, my guests. Pastors, please. Pastors, just accompany my guests then. Let's get to the office. Pastors, just follow our guests. Just accompany him and just, just have time with him for a few minutes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you're giving your tithe, we bless your tithe today. We bless your offerings. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are blessed with the blessing of the tenth.